Are you in traffic? Now you can start that. Okay. Right. Um, welcome to the HTC, Thursday, June 16th, 1 o'clock. Hi, Brad. Uh, so we've got uh, Diane Coombs. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Yay. Okay. And then uh, Carrie Thornwell. Yep, I'm here. Steve Welsh. That's Mr. Welsh to you. Mm -hmm. I'm teasing. <laughs> uh, and Abby, right. And staff, we have Holly Bacchus and Esmeralda. And Terry is in the Zoom. And Terry Norton. Um, okay, so in a, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the I agenda. I make a motion okay. to approve the agenda. Okay. Excellent. Okay, on actually Stephen's motion, uh, Diane. Aye. Uh, Carrie, aye. Steve, on your motion, aye. And I am an aye. Motion to approve consents. Oh, terrific. Okay, here we go. Um, on consent approvement, Diane. Wait a second. Let me just get my agenda. Consent. I, 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 I. Okay, great. Carrie, aye. Steve, on your motion, aye. And I'm an aye. Motion to approve consent with conditions. Okay. Uh, on that motion, Diane. Oh, actually, um, I got a little quick there. I wanted to, uh, 18 Canterbury. Um, Advice. Advice pool. I just, I had a thought. Can you give me just one moment? If I we can pull it, pull it up. Yeah. No, no, it's fine not to pull it. I just, um, revised pool COA subject to... COA 06-3910 conditions. Oh, previous COA conditions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, just on. Uh, if, uh, do we do we have do we vote on? That? I guess we do vote on that. Yeah. Um, all in favor of uh, consent with conditions with that one proviso on 18 Canterbury. Um, uh, thank you, Diane. Uh, Carrie. Aye. Stephen, on your mo motion. Aye. And I'm an aye. I make a motion to hold uh, vows. Okay, good. Yep, yep. On that motion, Diane. Aye. And Harry. Aye. Steve. Aye. And myself. Roof change. <laughs> so that's me. You were not here last time, Abby. Yeah, I did. I did the, it I, looks like new, new business, but I talked to the builder and we came up with the pewter. What's that color? You, uh, gray? it is gas Peter Gray, Peter and, gray is available. and that's approvable in the old Perfect. district. Oh, terrific. Um, so, so I just need yes. to change the application. Sorry, but the board was Paul Coombs, oh. Oliver, and Welch. So, only we only have, okay, Diane, can so, you um, leave this? Well, no, we yes, we don't have, have a quorum. Yeah, okay. Um, no quorum. Can we, we move this to? So I make a motion. Oh, sorry. Oh, Three is a quorum for the HDC. Yes. Yeah, we don't have three. Ray's not here. What, what, what you've got, Diane? Coombs. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Okay. I misread one. Sorry. All right. All right. So should we roll that? Yeah. There, there would yeah. be no motion. There's no action on it due to a lack of quorum. All right. Yep. So so okay. Thank that. you. Too bad. Sorry, Jack. Sorry. sorry. That'll, That'll be easy there. first thing. <laughs> Okay, so old biz, 76 Baxter Road. Uh, so we got <laughs> that's not gonna work because we have we have a set board of Ray, Camp, Coombs, Oliver, and Welch. And we only have what do we have? Three? Yeah, we have three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I'm an alternate on that. Yeah, yes, you are though. Well, I, I don't see Atlantic on the oh. Not see here. So, hey, the way things are going, I think we're going to get heard to, like within the next hour. And you might want to mute. Yeah, you can mute. Let me get to my house. Got it. So, do we? Um, I don't know that we need to motion that, Terry. Do yeah. we, I think we're going to have a bunch of these. Do we need to motion them, or they're just going to stay? On the agenda for the next printing. Um, which one are you looking at? God bless dad. Yeah. Okay, you got camp, coombs, 
Well, we don't have the rep. We, the, oh, the rep isn't here? Yeah. Oh, then that's just motion to hold for a rep. Okay. So motion, we uh, motion to hold yeah. for a rep. Okay, thanks, Diane. Uh, on Diane's motion, um, Stephen. Aye. And I and an I. And you on your motion, Diane? Aye. Thank you. Uh, do we have emeritus here? Yes. Yes. No. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, Stephen, Diane. Oh, well, as well, you're you come up twice. Actually, yeah, yeah well, I think it's John. Because of John. No, I don't know. But it's a three person board. Actually, I thought Ray and Val were on that. Well, that's their. No, I don't know, but even still. Oh, like it says they were, they're not listed as at least. Do you want to start the new button? You want to roll the dice on that? or? You know, I mean, I think I only, I mean, basically it's Abby, Stephen, and Diane, anyways, no matter what, according to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. I have the utmost yeah, confidence in all of you. I'm pretty high level. I thought we talked about this. Yeah, we're talking about it again oh, right now. <laughs> yeah, but we but we've reviewed it last time with him. What are we? Uh, I can start whenever you're ready. Please, sure. yeah. Okay, so um, I think if we start on sheet A two hundred one. That's probably the best place to start. Uh, you can see on the uh, west elevation, obviously that's the one elevation that's most, you know, is visible from the street. And um, begrudgingly, we, um, at one point we had a, a leaf walk. Uh, we've gotten rid of that, as you know. Um, we've changed the roof pitches uh, so that we've dropped the height of the main, uh, the highest ridge is actually 28.4, which, is almost two feet lower than the 30 feet, which is not uncommon for structures in that area. Um, we also changed the left side of the uh, west elevation to a hip roof, uh, you know, so that the, the massing uh, basically is reduced. So I think that kind of drops that ridge, probably some of the ridge of like three or four feet on the left side. Uh, on the right side, uh, all the way to the right, uh, we uh, eliminated the flush gable dormer drop the plate, um, drop the pitch. Uh, I think you drop that overall height by an extra foot. And then we actually reduce the dormer so it's a, a, the dormer is uh, set back uh, if, so that the eave line can run across. So the general idea here was to take the two pieces on the furthest right and the left of that elevation and, and drop the scale, of them, um, which I thought was a great suggestion. Uh, we revised the chimney detail slightly uh, also, again, by changing the roof pitch, we were able to um, um, just generally drop it, I think. Uh, so, again, just to reiterate, I think that this house, you know, it is going to be visible. Most of the houses in Monomoy are visible. We did some uh, extensive research about other houses in the area and their size and length. Uh, and uh, this house is well in line with those, it's certainly not the biggest or the longest. And we honestly tried to really keep the details really quite simple, uh, not try to reinvent the wheel here and try to uh, design a house that was, uh, you know, in keeping with the, the Monomoy area. So uh, hopefully you all feel the same way. So with that, I look forward to your comments. Thanks, Matt. Um, do we have on uh, historic? Nope. nope. Okay. Um, let's go right to the board then. And uh, anybody feel... Like I'll go. Thanks, Diane. Uh, can I get the front? The uh, that is. I think it's very nice and simple. I appreciate the said dormers and being drawn down. I I miss the other proposal that you had that went down to a one story after the, <clears throat> the side, uh, it's the previous HDC South, that's the South. But I have no problem working with the, the existing West elevation uh, other than 
the that one shed over on the right with the single window might come in a little bit. It would change its uh, dimension, but one on the way on the left is big and then the two in the middle are the same. And uh, I just would bring it in to sort of the same size that you have of the other dormers. That's all I could say. So uh, can I see another elevation? I think the whatever comes up next. I appreciate lowering the ridge. The chimneys, as you know, which I'm fond of, look, I like those. And I appreciate the fact that you're leaving out the uh, roof walk. So that is that elevation. One more. <clears throat> I think that the uh, roof, the hip roof will fit in. And I think the uh, dormers on the second floor are appropriate and appropriate in size. So I think it's, I don't have a problem with it um, at the moment. I think it's. I think it will be attractive and simple and and fit in there at forty one. Mm, thank you, That's Diane. It. Thanks, Diane. Um, Stephen. Okay. Thank you, um, Diane. Matt, so, just give me a refresher. The hardscape plan was approved. Uh, that is coming in. We just thought that that would be helpful to share with you, just to show you what the topo is doing, reiterate the fact that this structure actually, the, the average grade that we're selecting is actually lower than the street. So you, you kind of come in and go down a couple of feet. This is approved. Because it says it's approved. Is it approved? approved. Uh, it probably was approved. Sorry, I, I didn't realize it was approved. But is it stamped? No. No. Uh, if it says approved, it was approved. Okay, That's I'm sorry. A little. Yeah. Um, here I can't get clear signal for the grade. So. Oh, that's I know she's moved this fast. I know, I know that it just you are so fast. You really are. Yeah. yeah. Fastest or busiest historic district in the nation for that fast. <laughs> Many years ago, yeah. 10 years. There's an opening. I, you know, I did my two years as an alternate, and I was like, You did two years as yeah. an alternate? Yep. You're, that was one you're short a year. It was one term back then. Yeah, you're short a year. See, they upped it. Yeah, it was yeah. too short. It was two years. It was so and I was short, like, I forgot. <laughs> I'm glad I did it, but I just remember thinking, like, Never again. That's no, I think it was great. I think everyone should do it. I think it's, you learn a lot. You know, so I liked it, but I felt like it would have been a conflict. Um, but a lot of people could help. Uh, yeah, so I'm concerned about the grade. I'm concerned about the, I'm still concerned about the overall size. Um, I think primarily due to the fact that it addresses Monway Road left to right, where the other ones that are in the area are larger, or as large, I should say, are typically um, perpendicular or at an angle. So, um, Still got those concerns, Matt, but I don't know that that's going to make much difference. Um, I don't disagree with Diane's comments, but trumped by those are my concerns of grade and the uh, left to right. Yeah, no, I it got it. Thank got you. It. Yeah, thank you. Those are my comments, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, I I think what's Diane referred to was that far right dormer on the second floor, and I'm just wondering. I can shrink it. <laughs> okay, uh, because there are the two to the left are are, are smaller, and they're have bigger windows. So uh, windows, windows. <laughs> I could take um, like uh, a foot or foot. two out of it. You guys, you tell me what you want. Maybe. Maybe you make it the same as the others. Is that too? I could do that. Boring? Okay, I like that. Um, so um, I I think it's appropriate for the for the site. I, I think it's not lot line to lot line. I think it's it's a sort of a 
it fits on the site well, and I'm so tired of uh, new dwellings going, you know, taking up a whole lot. So I think this is okay. So um, I make a motion to. So I try a motion. Yeah, sure. I would approve as submitted today with the uh, points of the reducing the this. Uh, and on the second floor, that is the west elevation, right? Yes. So that's through staff. Yeah, that's that would be through staff, and um, um, Diane, you you woke up a little bit there, it. so I didn't catch what you said. You stated one happened. more time, Diane. I said to yeah. <laughs> Approve, approve Sue's staff as submitted with the shed dormer on the second floor of the west elevation being <coughs> reduced in width and enlarge the window. Okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, um, it's on the far right, Terry, on that second floor. Yeah. Far. This one right here. Yeah, I'm right. sorry, on the far right. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, I'm not sure about making that window larger if he, or shrinking the size. I don't know if that window is um, the same. It's pretty mm -hmm. It would be tight, but I'll make whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So on that motion, um, uh, Stephen. I'm going to be a no. Okay. And uh, Diane, on your motion. I. I, okay. I. And, uh, and I'm an I. So that, that actually passes. Um, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I wasn't going to. Yeah. It, it'll be. It, it's a lot of it's hidden. It's more about getting the cross sections and looking at it. Yeah, we feel uncomfortable with it, so I don't. <clears throat> but what the lot slopes off um, um, significantly too. So I'll be using it for the rest of the time. Uh, no. No, 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 BP. Okay. Motion to hold number three and four. This next one audio. is. Well Motion to hold number three, 55 yield point and four start uh, uh, 16 Eastern to wrap. Okay, on, on Stephen's motion, Diane. Aye. Carrie. Aye. And I am an I. Thank you. I don't see shelter stone. Motion to hold 12 Cod Codfish Park for representation. All in favor of Stephen's motion. Um, Diane. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Okay. Do we have any store for us? Uh, Jennifer. Who's Jennifer? Do we have Sunwin here? Anybody to rep that? Okay. Of course. Yeah. They're a new place, aren't they? Uh, give them a count to three. One, two, three. Motion to hold the uh, 11 Washington Farm for rep. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, on your motion, Stephen. <clears throat> Aye. And Diane. Aye. Harry. Aye. And myself. And we don't, I don't think we have Mark Catone here. Let's take a really good look at. Um, Justin. I'm here. Oh, he's here. Who is that? Dustin Murray. Which Dustin number Murray. Three. Number three. Okay, so we got to pass on. Motion to hold seven Sherburn to turn a plate for rep. Thank you, Stephen. On that motion, uh, Diane. Aye. Uh, Karen. Aye. On your motion, Stephen. Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, we've got a, a winner here. Dinner. 
Vai tomar o seu pai que ele vai começar a ter o seu nome. Não, 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 Might be kind of hard to see, but what we're going for is mahogany front door and all the other doors to be black. Um, the only other thing I don't think we noted on this is that the uh, balcony on the rear elevation is natural. Um, I think that's about it. Have at it, guys. Okay. Do you need somebody to go? I'll go. Yeah, go ahead, Diane. On the front elevation, uh, on the dormer, mm -hmm. the, the windows should be split in half, split apart. We're, we're not so used to. Um, on the dormer or on the gable? Ga on the gable, sorry. Yeah. Split that apart to fill up some of the sides. All your other windows are good. They go to, you know, a good length from the edge, but those are too close together. <laughs> And I would split. The ones on the first floor on your left elevation. And if okay. I could see a couple of the other elevations, I've seen the front and the left. Yep. The rear elevation, uh, I, I have no problem with it, I think that it is thoughtful and clean and simple. And the, the same with the, uh, what, east elevation. It, it's very simple and I think it will be suitable down there in Maple Lane. It fits in with other surrounding architecture on Rugged Road. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Diane. Um, Carrie. Well, I, I don't think there's anything on the street yet, right? <laughs> um, there's just one approved plan at lot three. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one front, it's a corner lot, And it's not sideline to sideline either. But I'm a little concerned about the second floor deck and all the glass facing rugged. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's going to be lots of vegetation. But what I don't get is the on the front of the building, the dormer that's happening. It seems like that whole right mass, that's like an unnecessary shift on the whole gable when you're looking at the northeast and I just wonder why don't you just do like forget that inner end of the gable and just extend the whole piece out so it reads as one mass rather than a weird extended not dormer dormer does everybody get what I'm talking yeah, about yeah yeah um Yeah, it would simplify it and create a consistent feed line all the way across to the right. Mm -hmm. um, you might gain a little extra square footage on the first and second floors. Um, oh, you yeah. just want that extended all the way to the right? Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, it, it, 
yeah, it's funny. It's sort of like a layering of building and it's not necessary. Just continue that all the way across and don't jog it back and pull it forward. It's but you're still good with it being a shed dormer? No, I'm not. No. If you look at the right elevation, the northeast, you can yep. see where the dormer. Um, but I, I don't think you should do that. I think you could bring the plate down to match because in on the on the right side of that, you're dying into where the roof is turned, the turned gable. So not. I don't know how to do this without you here to show you, but um, that would have to be a rope back, though. Would would the so have it be like a faux? Yeah, it would. Right, it would have to be a rope back, because otherwise it's getting way too tall. Is that what you're saying, Stephen? Let's yeah, it's just care if I may just tell me that would have to be a rope back for that to work without changing the uh, main roof pitch, which then will alter the ridge line and throw this could throw the I mean it looks like the front dormer or the front cable could come down with that. I know Dustin, if you were able to lower that um, main bridge, I don't know. I, I think it 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 might be able to work, but I don't know. It might affect your internal program. It will translate over to the main ridge and to the gable forward second story mass on the rear on the front. No, on the rear elevation. Mm -hmm. What about the front elevation? I think you can sort of play with the plan and make it work. It just seems like really unusual and awkward. Um, I'm not. I'm not necessarily poo pooing the idea. I just wanted to make sure I understood and then articulate what was involved. Um, is that it from you, Stephen? Uh, no, I actually don't comment. Yeah, and the rest of my comments, I agree with Diane and some of the window things, but I think it can to just simplify on that mm -hmm. piece. Okay, Stephen. So I think on the front of, the thing that uh, I have. Any primary concern with it is the front elevation, the second story data flow. I think that that actually should be subordinate to the dormer, and uh, the windows should align with the other windows or uh, left to right, the second story windows. Or um, I'm not suggesting they have to be the same size, but I think the header should align. So that's really what's grabbing my eye. Mm -hmm. That I don't disagree with uh, Carrie about that shed dying, that shed roof dying in, but we do see it. I'm not as concerned I, with that as I am about that other element. Um, the other uh, elevations I think are primarily going to uh, same comment for the rear elevation with respect to the windows. However, I think that that's probably never going to be visible, um, or if it is, it'll be on a big angle. And I think any trivialities I might comment upon are going to be viewed in an oblique angle, so I won't bother. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so along some of those comments that were just made, I I feel that the gable forward is is kind of prominent, and if if the front door um, the front door right now seems sort of subordinate to that that gable, so. Uh, I'd like to see a little more emphasis on that front door elevation. And I think that might tie in with what Carrie was saying um, to give that front door some real presence. Um, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying there? Um, the, the gable forward is sort of a prominent feature, but then this but then the front door is to the right on a sort of secondary. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to see that made the front door itself get more prominence. What's interesting okay. is you have an eight slope on the on the front facing gable and a nine on the other one with the dormer. Mm -hmm. And and it should be that, yeah, it should be that it's reversed. Um, the main roof. Should be right, that's that's actually how we had it drawn be before. Sure, go ahead. 
Sorry, the gable forward should be lowered to be subordinate to the main mass, and the main mass should have um, the higher eave and be consistent. I think that will help you. Right, and maybe the windows above the front door are are large, larger, like the ones you have for 46s you have in that projecting gable. So that, Got it. again, the windows on that, that elevation becomes um, front and foremost with the front door. Um, also, maybe to give the front door a little, uh, make it a little more, more uh, give it more, puff it out for a little, might be some side lights or something to make that front door more prominent. I think on the um, Northwest, on the rear elevation that those sliders should be reduced to a sort of, um, you know, a normal size French door and not, um, they look like 36s. They look sort of large. So I think those should be trimmed down. I'm sorry, for question, yeah, yeah. on the second floor? On the second floor, on the rear elevation northwest, okay. yep. the yep. Uh, French doors there should be reduced in size. And um, so, would we like to hold for some revisions? See if we can. I'll make, I'll make a motion to hold for revisions and let him decide what he's going to revise. Um. Any. Uh, all in favor of Diane's motion to hold for revisions. Uh, Stephen? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Diane, on your motion? Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you. Thanks, guys. 114, is there someone to represent that? Luke is here. I'm sitting back. I meant to just say that. Well, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you kindly gave us an approval for a, a one-story addition on this building um, a couple of months ago, I think. And uh, as a staff approval asked us in that application to pull back, um, we had extended by two feet the upper deck and you'd asked us to pull it back. Um, on behalf of my clients, um, I'm now appealing to you um, to maybe reconsider that. Uh, and so we are applying for the, for the deck alone here to be extended. And if I may, um, I just want to say that, you know, it's a little bit of a tricky site uh, in that, first of all, you have to come down close to 12 feet from your parking spot in order to access the front door. And then it's an upside down house. So you have to go back up uh, to the second floor level, um, you know, in order to occupy the general living space. And the owners, when they bought the house have asked me to convey that, um, you know, they far into Nantucket's uh, regulatory processes, they assume that they might be allowed you know, uh, easily enough to expand slightly the uh, second floor deck so that um, it becomes uh, an outdoor living, you know, more of an accessible outdoor living space for them. So right now, as it exists today, um, it's, it's eight feet deep. And as you can see on the west elevation, um, and many years ago, I suspect that the, the deck below it was a shingled wall. And I expect that was, um, provided, you know, to give a sort of horizontal buffer as viewed from across the um, uh, golf course in Pulpis Road. This uh, west elevation, um, you know, in its ex entirety is only viewed um, probably at the size of your thumb from across, you know, from Pulpis Road and across the golf course. It's, it's quite a long way away. And um, what the owners wanted me to bring to your attention and hoped uh, hope for approval was, you know, from Baxter Road, um, the impact of what we're asking, uh, we feel is is minor. Uh, we're asking for an additional, um, you know, only two feet, uh, 24 inches that um, obviously make it a more livable outdoor space. Um, you're all well aware of 
uh, you know, the, the sitting around a dining room table or any sort of group seating in an eight foot depth is often more of a lineup or a squeeze. And since this is, um, <clears throat> As, as such a challenging house in terms of its ex exterior access from the from the uh, from the general living space, um, you know we're we're sort of reapplying uh, for it. But if you look at uh, yeah, if you could scroll back up to that photograph, um, the south the front there, you could see um, that represents really pretty well the almost the entirety of the corner of the of what you would see from Baxter Road, and then of course um, the photo above that shows the other side. And so you would, we're not saying you wouldn't, you wouldn't see that extended corner um, by, by two feet, you would. But what we're say, say, saying is, you know, is it, is it really so terrible um, in that, you know, 25% of what you're currently looking at would be extended. It's it pretty, it's pretty, we feel like it's pretty minor. And mm -hmm. we've kept it initially on a bracket at the builder's uh, suggestion, um, both to, keep more in compliance the deck below it at being uh, staying at eight feet deep. Um, but also practically speaking, um, just pulling some, uh, utilizing the existing structure. And um, so I, to, to sort of uh, end my comments, I, I would say, you know, there, it's a very simple house. Um, what we're adding here is, um, uh, you know, an atypical element but in keeping with Sconset um, and, and the many um, sort of uh, atypical or whimsical elements that are about Sconset, we're, we wonder whether or not, in fact, this might be approvable. Uh, the last thing I would note is that um, in contrast to our, our approval provided, um, which was two eight foot decks stacked you know, with, with uh, painted balustrading, um, I suggest to my client that you might like better the lower, the lower deck, the one that says shingle wall to remain, uh, for that to remain as, as a shingled element um, to reduce the impact. Um, so that is, I think, uh, my comments. Um, and I would, I would thank you for the reconsideration. Thank you, Luke. Are you um, talking oh, about this project? Yes, basically, it would have been nice to have the in this PDF at least the previous approval, so you guys could have seen what was approved for staff. It was this, basically, basically exactly the same this yeah. minus the two feet. So, for clarification, uh, Luke, the second floor on the back, you want to extend that two more feet, and what else are you doing? Um, that is all we're applying for. Uh, I should say that the, the deck below it in the previous approval, you had provided for a shingle you know, ballast rating, open, you know, open balusters painted. Um, we're suggesting as an idea to tell maybe as a favorable, favorable one in your minds, to leave it as it currently exists today, which is as a shingle half wall. Right. Okay. And then you did you you already got HTC approval for that extension on the on the left there. Yeah, the addition. On the, on the, elevation. Right. the addition on the right, um, we got we have had an approval for. Yeah. Early, just a couple of weeks ago, right? A couple of months ago. Uh, a couple of months ago. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, who would like to go first? I'll go. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, so um, Luke, I was lukewarm, and then you said, "Is it really that terrible?" And then I started really thinking about it. Um, I think that you know, as seen in the pictures, um, front northeast and front southeast. Keep in mind that okay, if you take a look at the images there, and then you take a look at the. So much easier on the tablet. I'm going back to the tablet. I'm this to myself. If you go back to either the south or the north elevation, um, that concept of the small area of deck protruding past the larger deck, I think it 
it's not necessarily inappropriate, but for the full length, it looks of, of the um, rear elevation. So in the 2D, it, it looks less potentially inappropriate than it will on the west elevation where it will be the entire width of that elevation. So I'm gonna suggest a couple of things. The other thing is that we go back to is viewed from uh, the north and the south. Uh, to have a deck on top of a deck um, and have it protrude as much as it does. I would suggest you guys consider a wind break wall, even with windows on the uh, north elevation and the south elevation, which would be a shingled wall uh, underneath the second floor deck. Uh, no reason it can't have windows, no reason they can't remain open, but that helps to take away some of the concern of this second floor deck that's just kind of on the upper portion, well, on the second floor, kind of hanging out there. And then in conjunction with that, I would suggest that you break the extension back it looks like these are probably 10 foot sections. Um, can we go to the west elevation? Does anyone not understand what I'm talking about with um, the wind? Could I ask you something about that? Are you saying that on the, not the basement floor, but on the second floor, that that become It would be in? there's a wall with yeah. windows. Yeah, I guess, okay, <clears throat> go ahead, continue. And then on the next elevation up, Luke, I'm presuming that you're probably at 10 foot intervals on the second floor deck rail sections. If you were to come in four feet from each end and that's where you, the protrusion occurred, I think that that would help. I'm torn on that, but I think it would help to break that up a little bit. Mm. Interesting thoughts. Anyways, um, those are my comments. Yeah, I like that. So. Um, Diane. Uh, well, I'm trying to think what would be the best. I'm not sure about that wall without having it go down to the to the uh, basement area. I think it would look funny up at the, those two areas. Perhaps not. I just think if one was going to consider that, it should be the whole way. I think... Um, the breaking of it on either side of the doors up there is a good idea. It, my, I other concern is once we do this for this house, it's you all are so aware of once somebody gets something by, then the next thing you know, we have 10 of them wanting to have the same thing because there are other houses along Baxter Road which look like look out on the golf club and we've kept to eight feet. So as, as much as you can hide it, it would be good. I think if it was brought in that length, that width, you wouldn't see it so much on a cant as you drove by or whatever, because it would be set in. You'd see the eight feet and you wouldn't necessarily see the two extra feet added so view wise I think that's a good thing um, I, the wall is something I would have to see how it looked so perhaps in reality we could see a couple of different choices uh, how something would be good but that's what I have to say now about the porch mm -hmm. thank Next. you Diane um, yeah, thank, thank you, both of you. Um, I, I personally have always struggled with this house. I, I, I actually see it from the, the fifth hole or fourth hole. I look up at it and I think, God, that's an ugly house. And I just, oh, yes. just I, I just, the, 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 and, and what, what gets me is the, is the uh, deck over deck. It just, it just, just doesn't sit well. It's just hanging out there like, you just, um, you know, from the basement to the to the first floor to the second floor, it just looks like a, an appendage, like it's just, you know, pasted on. So I kind of like this idea of adding stability to this. I mean, if, if they would think, if they would consider that, um, I think that might be a, a long-term solution to this 
poor house that is really so simple, but is just crying for a good design. Can I add my comments? Yes. So I, you know, I understand what Diane's saying. I think a solution might be if they were going to go this route to just add some even six uh, six inch on center lattice panels on the north mm -hmm. and the south basement wall, because the half wall already exists there that's shingled on the first floor. So that just starts to fill in that space visually over that very small view angle that you have when you drive by due to the topography and what's around it. So that might address that. The other thing I would suggest that be considered if they pursue the uh, rebating the additional deck width is they if you wrapped the wind wall around three feet, say you rebated it three feet on each side instead or two feet on each side. If you wrap the wall I was talking about in the north and the south around to the west, that also becomes more along Abby's points of a kind of a a grounding element, a structural element that makes that deck on the second floor read very, very differently, I think, than it would, uh, than it will with even just the wind walls. I'm not as, I don't feel strong as strongly about that, but it would help to articulate in a sense why the, the proposed two foot bump out has been rebated from the side because it would align with a wind wall that wraps around. So that might be, I can't see pictures in my head, so I'm trying to figure this out looking at the- uh, well, Luke, do you understand what Stephen's saying? It then, takes the curse off that double-decker porch. That's a good way to say it. Um, Chris, so Stephen's su suggesting that we basically sh bring in those, those you know, Put an end wall all together on both, you know, bookend both bookend both sides, but bring them in by two or three feet. Is that what? No, oh, no. Wrap the corner to the back. So right here. The amount that you rebate the second floor deck extension. Yeah, open a window on the end. I think so. Um, so when I say the extension, I'm talking about the two foot depth as measured from the house towards the golf course, and the rebate I'm saying is from the north and the south. You would make the width of that extension a little bit less. Just on the uh, just on the highest deck, right? Yes, and the wind wall below it would wrap sure. to correspond. I think you might have a winner winner bluefish dinner there. Yeah, and that that would correspond to your neighbors and why that works so well um, at the abutter. Um, has a, has a wrap around on the first floor, but oh, you're but saying it, actually, you're saying actually bring a roof like a roof system. Uh, no, no, no. Carrie, I think Carrie's got it. Your yeah. your oh, esteemed partner here is sketching up. Um, should we hold for see what you can do with this look? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll I'll call for revisions and let him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Um, on Diane's. Motion, Stephen. I'm and I noting that Thursdays is a little more relaxed. It's designed at the table there sometimes. <laughs> yeah, okay. So Sorry, no, nobody's here anyway. Okay. So, um, and then Diane, on your motion. Aye. Aye, and I'm an aye. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, Emeritus uh, requested to hold all his items till uh, Tuesday. Okay. So I'll make a motion to hold 114 Baxter. And oh no, I'm sorry, Maple Lane lot four, number five, six, and seven are all the same address. Um, and then also 10 is and then nine 10 and Starbuck and 10 Starbuck. So both. Okay, thank you, Diane. Uh, on your motion, um, sorry, uh, uh Stephen, aye, and uh, Diane, aye, uh, Carrie. On that motion, I and I'm an I. I so we're going, look at, we're going to look at Joe Topham. I don't see Joe in the queue. I didn't Joe either. Topham. So hold, I will hold for representation. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, um, I Carrie, I. Uh, and I'm an 
What about Ben Norman? Ben is here. Right here. Excellent. So that is just one chest. Okay. Oh, the one you guys were working on? You got what I was saying. I did. Yeah. I said that's kind of wears off. Come on, get up. Understand. Hey, Ben, what you got? So, um, a couple months ago, we had a uh, approval to put a roof walk on this structure. Uh, and subsequently, I brought the homeowner over to an existing roof walk to kind of experience the, 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 the process of getting up to the roof walk. Um, and um, I guess bluntly, he was felt incredibly unsafe um, using a scuttle and a ladder to get to the roof walk. Um, so um, we're in front of you today to do a, a, a partial um, shaft, uh, skirted shaft on the back uh, left corner, I guess, um, to create a, a, what will be a safer access to the roof walk. Um, and in doing so, we had to widen it um, about three inches on each side to get a proper um, shaft up to it. So it got slightly wider and um, we are requesting a small paneled corner in the back. Um, also to note, if you stand in the back of this property in the backyard, you can actually see two more of these um, skirted portions of a roof walk. Um, so it was sort of hard to argue with him not to request it because there are quite a few in his direct line of sight. Um, you know. Ideally, it's it's in the probably the most ideal location as far as visibility, um, and we hope that uh, natural the weather obviously a one by six um, TNG board, and uh, we hope that you can see that hey, it's Jay. not a big deal. Oh, thanks, Ben. Um, Jay, you want to talk about the Thank you, Madam Chair. So again, uh, for the record, this is the um, typical Nantucket built for uh, John D. Varney. He was a sea captain. I got dates anywhere between 1794 and 1810. Um, HSAB to take a look at the proposal. They said that this will be visible from Cliff Road. Having a partially um, skirted roof walk is not historically appropriate. Um, the roof lock structure should remain open without any enclosing skirt boards uh, and the width should remain at eight feet. Um, from staff's perspective, I do agree with HSAB on this. It is an odd and atypical configuration to hide that access shaft. Additional width does not seem necessary, but obviously to include that, that's why they're requesting it. Um, so those are the comments, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holly. Um, Okay, digesting, digesting. Did you want to say something? Um, just further that it may be helpful um, because I think obviously this time of year, there's a lot of trees right now. Mm -hmm. um, maybe um, a view, um, additional photos to help whether or not that's actually going to be visible because obviously that would be something. Um, but it is a tip. It is on the if you if somebody they said Cliff Road, it is actually um, on the other side. Yeah, if we look at the locus, yeah, it's on the on the out of town side. In, inside. Uh, right. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you, Ben. Uh, let's hear from the board. I'll go. Okay. Thank you. Uh, ben, I, yeah, I agree. It's atypical, however, I think given the distance of the view and the roof color, which is like a light gray, that that small amount of skirt is going to blend. Um, I know that Jonathan Berry, who built the house in 1810, would not be so wobbly as a sea captain to have to have that safety aspect, but I totally understand. Um, and the width of, you know, basically a half a foot, um, is I don't think that's the issue. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. And uh, uh, Diane? Um, I'm sorry, but I think uh, we have 
an architectural board to tell us this is an historic house in an historic area. Um, to change it because somebody's frightened to go up there is questionable to me. So I, I would go and view it or whatever, but um, Paul, seeable, I would not vote for it. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Karen. Unfortunately, I'm with Diane and H. Sab. Okay. Um, <clears throat> gosh. All right. Uh, I would suggest that we, I will make a note for the organizational focus committee that we, given the fact that we, and I'm not trying to persuade you guys, but I just want to point out we've approved these in historic locations on historic homes. And I think it's unfair to everyone. I'm not saying again this particular one, but this is an opportunity to bring up. We should determine a policy so we don't have to review those. I am going to use John McLaughlin's line. We, you know, primarily we are duly elected officials put here for the purpose of making these determinations. I, with all respect to the historic advisory board, I don't need them to tell me this is an historic home. Um, but uh, I think that's enough for now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Um, I personally, so I think we take every individual situation uh, by itself, and and I I am pretty, um, you know, I know this house is right in my neighborhood. I walk the dogs up there. I can see it. Um, I kind of think it's okay because I think there are some big maples. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's on the far side of uh, Cliff Road. And I think um, it's a small amount and it, it will blend in. So I, um, I think, could you hold that picture just right there? See, that is, it's, it's from the yard though. That's yeah, but that, but the, the roof walk encompasses that that main mass of yeah so it would be like yeah I'll make so a motion. I, okay all right go uh, ahead Steve. I'll make a motion for uh, well I think we can do it if we want I think uh, what I the motion is that Ben will return on Tuesday with an image taken from Cliff Road and um, emailed so we can view it on the screen and on our tablets at the next meeting. Oh okay. So that's kind of like a hold for info. And yeah. we can go and we can go. Yeah, and anyway, can go yeah, right, yeah, go walk around. So um on Stephen's motion, Diane. Aye. And Carrie? Aye. And Stephen on your motion? I'm an eye. And I I'm an eye as well. So that is uh hold for more. Thanks, right, Ben. I'll send, I'll send you pictures right away. Okay, great. All right, thanks guys. You, Winchester. Oops. We did Hooper, right? No. More those were revisions. Those were houses, the main houses. These are the garages. Oh, pardon. Yeah. Uh, I don't see David in the queue unless somebody else was represented. David, are you with us? Motion to hold 52 Hooper Farm and 52 R Hooper Farm garages for rep. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, on Stephen's motion, Diane. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Stephen, on your motion. Aye. And I'm. Uh... I thought I saw Tim here. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Hey. Nine E Street. Is this historic? Oh, okay. Oh, we got two. Which one's first? Two, right by the water. Um, main house is next. Main house is first. Six, three, yes. five, nine. Was that gray that you just went to scroll by? Was that the roof color? Is it white? Mm 
color. Let me know if you want me to uh, stop. Sure, sure. Give us, tell us exactly what you're doing. Okay, so there's two applications, but the, um, so they can be heard together if it's okay with you. It's two structures on the same property. Um, we have the main house uh, to the north and the cottage to the south. Uh, both structures are at the end of the street. Uh, we've designed the arrays to completely cover and align with the pitches that they'll be installed on to create a nice integrated visual or view and perspective. Um, and as you can see from the applications, we took pictures from various locations to show the lack of visibility. Um, I will also note that a couple of years ago, I think it was maybe two and a half, three years ago, we did install solar on the adjacent property at 11 E Street. Um, and it, they are, the, the owners are related. So it's, it's, it's somewhat similar in, in context there. Um, so I think that's that covers the uh, the, the, the specifics. There, happy to ask, answer any questions. Thanks, Tim. Did you, did you say that the existing roof color was gray? Yes, I it what? is I, it is it is a gray. Yeah, and I think the the key point there is that the pitches that we are installing on will be, as you can see from the pictures, will be. Um, it's, it's a very integrated rectangular design completely covering the pitch. So you're not gonna, it's, it's just gonna be black. Right, so, um, but- And you're yeah. saying we're not gonna see it? Correct. Okay, oh. we're gonna hear from Holly. All right, so we have Medicaid advisory comments. Uh, they reviewed this. Um, don't know what the age of the structure is, but um, it is obviously in the older part of Mattaquet. Um, and their overall comments, they say it does not meet the guidelines and not appropriate. They said, um, out of character for neighborhood and surrounding, highly visible to neighbors, there is sufficient property ground array for the installation to be ground mounted, which is the preferred method according to town guidance, which indicates application of these systems as a ground array or encouraged the appropriateness of a um, PV or solar thermal systems will be based on the historic character and architectural significance of an individual structure and its relation to surroundings. And it is always preferable to use a, the least visible technology. It is important to attempt to minimize any adverse effects as well as to mitigate the visual impacts of these panels and all of their supplemental equipment may have on the surrounding area. And therefore, whenever possible, uh, the least visible installation of ground arrays is preferred. No indication where associated equipment is to be installed, equipment location, enclosure not indicated, no vegetation plan for butter view issues, um, and they recommended revised resubmit. I, I did wanna mention the, 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 the biggest, obviously, um, from staff's perspective, looking at this, I did not look at this before because Matt does. Um, but obviously, the roof um, shingles should be black or so those are my and not on the. Um, I'll go. Those are my comments, Matt. Oh, thank you, Holly. Go ahead. Uh, yep, Diane, go. You're next. The we have rules for solar panels. One says it's not on the front door, uh, visible from the street, and it must be on a black roof. So this is on a gray roof, and whether they extend all the way across or whatever, they're visible I'm looking down on East Street, whether they're people who live next door, are cousins, aunts, or uncles, it has little... <clears throat> Madiket board does not want to say it doesn't fit in and they do have room to put on a ground array and I think that's what we should consider. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Um, That's it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, I think first of all, I would like to do a view. Um, I believe I'm familiar with this property, but I want to make sure. Um, and then number two, I think the cardinal points are incorrectly addressed slightly, Tim. Your, this is indicating in the drawing face the roof planes facing south, primarily south, whereas they actually face primarily east. So I think in the solar uh, world, that's not as good as facing south or west. And um, that might be a consideration too. I also wanted to get a clarification. There is a dashed line through Madam Chair on the site plan at a, right off the rear of the house, Tim. Is that conservation? What is that? Um, can you show on the screen where you're referring to? Uh, Holly's got the cursor on it. It's right at the rear of the house. There's two, there's a there's actually two lines, but could be a hundred foot buffer. Yeah. Is it towards the walk? Is it towards the yeah, it's right here? Yeah. Parallel. It's not, I'm, I'm asking relative to yeah, the potential use of a ground array, not the this, so this just, Yeah, okay. There's, there is nowhere on this property where a ground array can be installed. Absolutely zero. Okay. Right. So for my comments then are again to recap, uh, cardinal point correction and a view. Yeah. yeah, and and it's Stephen to, to your question. It faces slightly southeast from a solar perspective. These these the, this install is actually very very good. Um, its efficiency is going to be you know based on the pitch and the orientation. It, it's it's very close to south. Um, so, but uh, Tim, if I threw you, Madam Chair. The orientation of this is actually enough that the southeast and the southwest are nearly the same. And the, of course, the difference is the southwest is on the rear of the structure. And there's more space, uh, I believe, roof space. Uh, uh, Stephen, which property are you referring to? Um, the main house that we're reviewing. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the other side. No, the, the cardinal points are that's the map isn't correct, and the cardinal points aren't correct. If, if you Google it, oh, you can see oh, it's okay. shifted so I such that the southeast and the um, southwest axes are both facing um, the angle is such that you're going to get morning sun or afternoon sun, right. And you're going to get the same solar orientation with regards to the extent of the season. Obviously, the sun is higher in the summer and lower in the winter. And so your exposure angle is, is different. But it would be, from what I'm looking at at Google, uh, both Google Drive and Google Maps, it's remarkably similar. So I'd just like to have that updated so we're working with accurate information. That's all. Nothing on you, Tim. I just want to have it accurate. I want to do it. Thank you. Hmm, thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Karen. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be seen from Washington, but I do think F Street, there's a big opening where that circular driveway shoots right through. And I'm thinking a view is going to be important. And I think a black roof would be in, imperative um, here because Connecticut, yeah, it's pretty tightly packed. Um, so that's my comment. Thanks, Carrie. Um, Tim, um, did, if we went down East Street, could we get right to that house? Uh, or is that on private property? You, you can walk all the way down. Uh, all the way down so we can see the, the um, yeah. main house. Yeah, the main house is completely blocked from by the cottage. There is no visibility from a public way of that main house but there are neighbors to either side so with with driveways and can we clarify and we but is just could i just get clarification my understanding is that the cons we are 
visib its visibility from a public way and not from a private property. Public way, correct. Which right. which E Street is? I mean, appropriateness relative to character setting or under Section Nine B. So there's that, but mm -hmm. I don't. I your point, Tim, I think is well taken, and I think it's you know we're going to do a view and. It will probably be very helpful to your position. These images you provided are helpful, but it's yeah. not nearly as good as people being going out to view and validate themselves. Is that fair to you? Yeah, I I I, I don't know this property, and I, I I mean I don't know this particular area. I know other areas, but um, I just want to see how visible it's going to be. So I like the idea of a view. Um, so I think the problem. I, I think that's a good call, guys. Take, take go take a view. And when you're and, and also when you look to the right, you should also look to the left because you'll see 11 East Street there, which does have solar. Got it. And, and is the black roof viable? I don't think a black roof is that. No, I don't think so. I mean, I think certainly on the cottage, it's relatively new. Okay. Um, and I think on that cottage, which is the southerly, that's the main house you're showing there. Um, you can see the cottage on the right there. Um, you can see we are completely covering the um, the pitch, the elevation there. Okay. So, All right. Well, thank you, Tim. Um, yeah. I, have one, I have one more. Thing more. All, right. All right. Um, Tim, the other thing I think you need to please give consideration to the extent this if it turns out to be viewable is on the dormer that the, you know, I, I know you said that you designed it to cover the entirety, but um, with respect to the width, which in the drawing, it looks like it's a little short, but with respect to the roof slope, the run of the roof, I think that it needs to cover the majority, if not all of it. Um, so I'd ask you to guys give that some consideration too. Um, I think as we go into integration, and more of an integrated design look that um, these types of an approach with, even if there are some false panels, and I'm not suggesting you know a third of these be false panels, but um, covering the entirety of a roof slope, I think will make a tremendous difference with respect to catching the eye or not catching the eye. So anyways, I didn't wanna have you walk away without a little bit of that thoughtfulness in your mind. So, yeah, I, I, I hear you, Stephen, and, and I think we have another project where you had asked us to consider painting the the gray right. of surround black, which we we're we're in the queue to come back and show you that we can do that. We have a solution there, so that may be applicable here as well. Okay, fair enough. Okay, oh, all right. Do, do we hear? Do I hear a motion for you? Motion to view and um, and just address the uh, cardinal points. Okay, thank you. And um, on Carrie's motion, uh, Stephen. Aye. Uh, Carrie, aye. Aye. motion. <laughs> Diane. Aye. Uh, and I'm an aye. Madam Chair, that he does have a second one. I, I you really didn't look at the, both of them. At the I same think time. we're going to. There are <laughs> comments. Um, I okay. will note that that's okay. Um, that they're pretty much the same mm -hmm. comments. Yeah, to so. track. Um, the uh, guest cottage. Do I hear that motion? Oh yeah, Tim. Unless you've got something to add, I would. I'm good with that. I think it's. Yep. I think yeah. From our perspective, it's one project. And everything's similarly applicable. Okay, great. Um, so on that motion to track, uh, who made that motion? Aye. Uh, Stephen. Uh, Diane. Aye. And Perry, aye. And Stephen, on your motion, aye. And I'm. Do we have time for one more? Yeah. Maybe two. CWM, twenty-one March. He's not here. Who is here though? Motion to call. Wait on the motion. Well, Brenda's here with Joe Topple. I don't know if he's willing. That was one we skipped over. Yeah. Oh, and did we hold Matt's 30, 31s? Yes, yes. Uh, so yep. most to hold 21 South Water for rep. Okay. Um, on that motion, uh, Carrie. Hi. Diane. Hi. 
and Stephen on your motion, aye. and I'm an aye. Did you say Joe yeah. Topham was here? Well, Brenda's here. I, Brenda, I don't know if, if Joe is willing to um, for uh, 21 years. TJ's up next, isn't it? Well, I mean, we, we already skipped. Oh, we're going back. Yeah, gotcha. If, if he was, if Brenda's sitting there. Brenda, okay. Brenda, are you here? Brenda or Joe? Hmm. Well, maybe she's number two of the next one. But are we holding all of Emeritus? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we yeah. did that already. And then, oh, yeah. so okay. if it's not. So two candles. Yeah. Well, we the board? They probably just let you here. Yeah, he's here. Will be a three-person board. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, the whole old business would only be a three-person board. Yeah, it's probably not. Good. So they're probably not here, thinking you would never have gotten right. Right. Is Robbie here? Mm, I don't see Robbie. I don't, I don't think. Val yeah. and I, all the all of that business is either Robbie, Val, or Emeritus after CJ. I don't think we should do a uh, Ginzy Lane. It's so many of them, and we don't have time. I'd, I'd hate to get halfway through it and then have to quit. Why don't we? They're, they're not here, Diane. I think we should actually bag it. I'm here. There's one. Rob, 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 Rob isn't here. New business. Yeah. 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 Yeah
No. It, it's, it's, Carrie said it's, you know, 10 feet on the right and ten, nine feet on the left, but. No, the house is set back seven and nine, knowing that the, well, thinking that the setback is five feet here. I'm getting to it. Yeah. Um, so Steve, go ahead. So I, other than just clarifying the setbacks, I think it's a very charming small house and it's a good location for it. And that's it. Yeah, um, Diane. I think it's appropriate for there. I, I look forward to seeing it up there. We'll, we'll get the setback straightened out. That's fine. I would approve it with the right. um, proper setbacks. And, and I am sort of agree with that if the setbacks are within keeping to the, um, the zoning. Motion to approve through staff with setbacks confirmed and it required adjusted. Okay, I like that. Um, Diane, on the motion. It's residential commercial. Hi. Uh, and uh, Stephen, on your motion. Hi. And I'm an I. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Yep, side and rear is five feet, front is 10 feet. So it's just an so it's good. So the motion works and okay. the approval works. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Oh, so that was our last one. Yeah. So, yes. Dun, 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 dun. Dance and wow, we wait around so the All you need is a motion. Yes. Yeah. Who's, who's I don't think I've signed any today. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's I, I'm just, yeah. I'm just looking at it, so I'm responding. Like, yes. Oh, I don't think I've signed it. Yeah, no one's been here. Yeah, so, yeah, most of that was just yeah. Oh, yeah. So, did, sorry, did somebody have motion to adjourn? Okay, thank you, Carrie. Uh, on Carrie's motion, Diane. Hi. And Stephen Rush. Hi. 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 Hi.